Hi, today's good person to know is Michael Birch. He co-founded Bebo, a social networking site, back in 2005 with his wife, which they ended up selling three years later for a whopping $850 million to AOL. And then five years later, they bought it back for $1 million. Michael says he bought back Bebo, which stood for blog early, blog often, for fun, not actually knowing what they wanted to do with it. Well, I guess it was their baby and they started it and they had the opportunity to buy it back the next to nothing peanuts in their eyes, and so they did. So it got them thinking about the future of social networking sites, and Michael took us down memory lane as to where it all started and where we're at. And in my humble opinion, Michael gives a compelling explanation as to why social media will continue to evolve, and that's because people change, as do their interests, their preferences, their hobbies, and he likened it to going to a bar. The interesting point that Michael made was that Bieber had its time and now it's gone like so many other sites before it and that's a telling sign. i done my own research and Michael's still very much in the business of being inventive and novel and is now into making apps. So if you're thinking about where you should be directing your efforts or what you should be doing next, listen very attentively to what Michael has to say in this video because he's a very clever forward-thinking man who clearly knows what he's talking about. So I hope you enjoy this video and thank you for watching. I started Bebo nine years ago, sold it um, six years ago now. So it was sold to AOL for far too much money. Uh, about a year ago we bought Bebo back for one million dollars. <laughs> we bought it back and everyone thought, oh, you must have like these genius plans for what you're going to do with it. And we had no clue whatsoever. <laughs> oh look, we could buy it back, wouldn't it be funny if we bought it back? In, in true Silicon Valley style, the first thing we did, we thought, well, you know, we don't really know what we're going to do with it, so we'll do a corporate video. And I thought, well, that's bought a bit of time, and maybe given us a bit of time to think about what we're going to do with this thing. So obviously we alluded to the fact that we were going to do exciting new things, and answered no questions whatsoever, or gave anything away, because we didn't have a clue what we were going to do with it. So we, we sat down and started thinking, okay, we, we got this asset, we bought it back. Um, I think in total it's got about 80 million registered members. They were mostly teenagers when they used Bebo, and most of them lost their social networking virginity to it, if you like. And now most of them are in their early 20s, so we should start thinking about what, what do we build that's kind of relevant to them today. And so that kind of got us thinking about, well, what is the future of social media? What's, what's really going to happen? And I think to answer that question, you have to start by sort of going back and thinking, well, let's look at the evolution of it, and then maybe we can figure out what's going to happen next. There was a uh, website called sixdegrees.com, which some of you may remember from the late 90s. And that was kind of the first, I think, social network in that place on the premise that everyone knew each other by six degrees of separation. <coughs> Following that, there was this site called Planet All, which sold to Amazon for $100 million, I think, in 1999. It didn't fare so well and kind of died. And then back in 2003, I believe it was, Friendster came along, which would be the first kind of social network that I feel got all the core ingredients right for what I now call the classic social network, which is this big network that wants to take over the world and go for world dominance and everyone's a member of it and everyone's connected with everyone else and it sort of becomes your single thing that's important to you in the world. And, uh, and that sort of came and then went away again. Uh, and then MySpace rose and became a lot bigger than that. And that kind of has gone away to oblivion. And then Facebook was the one that came along and sort of seemed to get it all right, and they had this focus on um, social utility, which was a very good idea. Uh, and it seemed that they'd kind of got it all sussed, and they were a bit of over the world, and uh, certainly if you look at their stock price, they do. I don't think that Facebook will be necessarily around, certainly in 100 years, but maybe they won't be anything like they are now in 10, 20 years. And what we didn't want to do was buy back Bebo and then sort of try and reinvent it as like a, a newer Bebo with a nice new logo and kind of nice design and, you know, like curvy edges everywhere. And hope that it would suddenly do really well. So talking about the history, we were one of those kind of little leaps of something that sort of came and went, which seemed to be a recurring theme of most social networks <coughs> until Facebook so far. It, it had its moment and it's gone like so many other things. And, and my belief is that this is kind of the way things work. It's a little bit 
uh, like bars in life, you can go to a bar for a long time and that's your bar and that suits your period of life and then it sort of passes on and you start going to a different bar and have different circles of friends. And I don't, I don't believe I can have about 800 friends or so on Facebook. And the problem as you spend more and more time on the network is you, you start with your genuine friends, like your true friends are the ones you initially invite. And so it's all very exciting to be in with and you're having real conversations with people you want to talk to. And then you build up this friend list and you end up with more and more friends. And then you start limiting on what you're sharing because you don't really want to share what you're thinking because you kind of don't know who's really going to see it. You've forgotten who all those people are. And so it actually sort of becomes less useful rather than more useful. And then if you do start a new network, it's suddenly all your new friends and that's exciting. And I think the thing that people have always argued is that the network, you know, the great thing about social networks is a very defensible business that you end up with millions and millions, tens, hundreds of millions of members, you end up with all your friends and it's taken quite a time to build up that friend list and therefore you don't want to go anywhere else. And I would actually argue that the, the opposite is true. The reason they actually grow very quickly is because of this network thing, it's better with more friends. And I think the reason they fall very quickly is because of the network thing. And it's happened again and again. I wouldn't say it's happened to Facebook yet, but when people do move on to the next thing, they take all their friends with them in the same way they arrive with their friends, they leave with their friends, plus a few Klingons that they gather along the way, and then they go to their next network and they build up that next network. It's all about Bebo, and we decided we're not going to try and do like a Facebook competitor, as I would call it. And uh, maybe the way we need to think about this is that uh, let's face the reality that these things are going to come and they're going to go and they're going to have a lifespan. And Bebo, rather than being the Bebo brand and try and make it big again, which is very difficult to reinvent any brand, let's think about how we could use the Bebo brand more as a kind of a marketing umbrella. And then started thinking that's very analogous with a lot of um, game companies like, like Zynga and many others. And they, they are a parent company and they develop different games and different things and those things, they come and they go. And so Bebo, maybe we can use it to, to launch lots of different apps. We're going to build apps that are going to have their lifespan and they're going to come and they're going to go. But they're very focused. Let's just build apps that does one thing really, really well, which is kind of what a lot of these other apps now are really doing. We always <coughs> think that every idea is gone and everything's been done and then someone says, yeah, but well, what about this? And you go, oh yeah, everything was done apart from that thing. <laughs> Until someone else says something else. So I, I, I really don't think there is any limit. There's an infinite number of things that can be done. But you've got to be different enough to kind of identify something that people are willing to, to, to use and kind of commit some time to.